Welcome to our training on empowering expected parents, pregnancy options counseling, and open adoption as an alternative to state adoption. Open Adoption and Family Services and Friends in Adoption, two nonprofit high integrity national agencies, have formed the National Pro Choice Adoption Collaborative, or NPAC. We are very unique in that we are pro choice, not religiously affiliated, and welcome diversity. I'm Sherry Levine. I'm the director of Open Adoption and Family Services. I've been with the agency for 24 years. I'm also an adoptive mom. Both of my kids were born and raised in open adoptions, and I have very close relationships with their birth moms. I'm also an advocate for children's rights. Open Adoption and Family Services is a nonprofit agency founded in 1985. We're licensed in Oregon and Washington and serve expectant parents nationwide. We're pro-choice and see all options counseling through a reproductive justice lens. We provide unbiased information so expectant moms are empowered to make a truly informed decision about their pregnancy. We're not religiously affiliated. Since 95% of adoption agencies nationwide are religiously affiliated, we are very unique. We also welcome diversity, including all ethnicities, religions, and lifestyles. We welcome people who are straight, LGBTQ, married, and single. Dawn Smith Pliner is the founding director of Friends in Adoption. She's an adoptive mom and has relationships with her children's extended birth families. Her agency memberships include the Human Rights Campaign, All Children, All Families, the Abortion Care Network, and the Family Equality Council. She's also a recipient of the Angel in Adoption Award. Friends in Adoption is a nonprofit agency founded in 1982. They are licensed in New York, Vermont, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and work nationwide. They're pro-choice with a reproductive justice lens. They're not religiously affiliated and they welcome all families. The objectives today are to receive the tools and resources you'll need to assist women and families in their decision-making process as they explore all of their pregnancy options, to learn about open adoption choices for children up to the age of three and a half, to learn about open adoption as an alternative to state adoption, the links to the videos, handouts, and websites referred to throughout this webinar are activated in the PDF version, which is available for download on the same page as this video. As we begin, it's important to ask yourself how you think expectant moms might feel as they consider all of their pregnancy options. Scared, confused, or hopeful and excited? What would they need from you? to be non-judgmental, well-informed, patient, and compassionate. We have a Bill of Rights for those experiencing unintended pregnancy and those who are currently parenting and struggling. We feel they deserve to have access to information about all of their options, freely explore their options without pressure or judgment, receive respect, compassion, and acceptance receive unbiased, non-directive pregnancy options counseling from qualified counselors, have their choice honored regardless of what it is. Although we often refer to expectant moms, our process is also inclusive of expectant fathers and extended family members. Okay, let's dive in. In March 2016, the Guttmacher Institute released some interesting statistics about unintended pregnancies. Let's review them. 45% of pregnancies in the U.S. are unintended. Approximately 60% of these women will choose to continue their pregnancy, while about 40% will choose to have an abortion, and about 1% will choose adoption. 75% of women who place children for adoption each year are between the ages of 20 and 45, while 25% are teens. Of women who have had abortions, 61% already have at least one child, 58% are in their 20s, 
56% are unmarried, and 73% report a religious affiliation. By the age of 45, more than half of American women will have an unintended pregnancy, and 3 in 10 will have had an abortion. Do any of these statistics surprise you? Do they challenge the general assumptions in our culture surrounding pregnancy options? What do you see in your work? Do these numbers reflect the choices of the women and couples you work with? These are interesting questions to ponder as you move forward. Here's a link to those statistics. Before you provide pregnancy options counseling, it's important to explore your own personal and professional values. What are your values regarding pregnancy options, parenting, abortion, and adoption? Do you have personal experience with these choices? What were you raised to believe when you were growing up? Do you feel differently now? How do you think your personal values and beliefs may consciously or unconsciously influence your work? What can you do to continue exploring your own values and beliefs? Here are some tips as you explore all pregnancy options with expectant parents and those who are already parenting and struggling. Making an informed decision comes from having access to all available information. So it's important that you're equipped with the most current and accurate information about each option. Avoid making assumptions about which options the mom may be interested in. All sorts of women make all sorts of choices, each for their own unique reasons. In fact, over the course of her lifetime, she may experience all three options. She may parent, she may have an abortion, and she may plan an adoption. So don't be afraid that you'll offend her by presenting a particular option. You may be the only person in her life who is willing and able to discuss all three of her pregnancy options. The language we use to talk about these options will likely frame them in a negative or positive light. So we say terminating a pregnancy instead of getting rid of it, or parenting your child instead of keeping your baby, or planning an adoption instead of putting your baby up for adoption. It's important to create an emotionally safe place in which you are an empathetic, active listener who shows genuine interest and concern. The goal is for her to feel understood, cared for, empowered, informed, and not judged. This requires letting go of your investment in her decision. Your role is to provide her with information so she can make her own choice. She needs to know that you trust she has the wisdom to make this decision. This handout provides a script for pregnancy options counseling. In our empowerment model, you'll ask, how did you feel when you found out you were pregnant? Shock, denial, overwhelmed, afraid, or hopeful and excited. It's important not to assume that everyone is happy with the news of their pregnancy. For some women, it might bring on a cascade of fears and concerns. You'll ask, what do you see as your pregnancy options? She may think only one or two are available to her. Your role is to expand her options. You'll ask, what is your knowledge of and feelings around each pregnancy option? Use open-ended questions and statements like, tell me what you know about parenting. Tell me what you know about abortion. Tell me what you know about adoption. Then you'll hear her fears and stereotypes and have a basis from which to educate her. Here's a list of questions and statements to review with her. You'll ask about her values, including personal, religious, spiritual, and cultural values. Your goal is to listen as she talks about her fears and hopes. You'll discuss the expectations from her family and community. She may be receiving extreme pressure from her family. Help her explore her feelings independently of those expectations. You'll ask what are her goals for the future, for school, work, and family. What are her goals for her child if she chooses to carry the pregnancy? Where does she see herself in one year and in five years? You'll explore her financial situation and access to resources. If she's parenting, we'll help her create a budget and research public assistance. 
You'll ask who is in her support system and what support can they offer. If her mom has offered to help, we'll invite her in and have an open discussion about what that help will look like. We'll also explore the emotional cost of having another family member in the parenting role. Will she still feel like the mom? You'll ask about her past experiences with pregnancy, parenting, abortion, and adoption. Family patterns are powerful. If her mom was a teen parent, it's much more likely that she'll become one. You'll explore her relationship with the birth father or current partner. Is he pressuring her? Does she believe that a particular choice will impact their future together? You'll explore her prenatal care and access to insurance. Here's a handout you can give her as a worksheet. It's important to be sensitive to considerations around cultural diversity, including cultural attitudes, family structures, religious beliefs, and language needs. It's critical to provide access to materials in her native language and to bilingual counselors and or interpreters. Let's talk about the option of abortion. In the US, abortion is legal during the first and part of the second trimester. Here's an overview from Planned Parenthood that details common questions and answers about abortion. One option is the abortion pill or medication abortion. It's available up to nine weeks of pregnancy. It's 97 to 99% effective. The abortion pill has been used safely for over 10 years. Here's a link to more information. There's also surgical or in-clinic abortion. It's 99% effective. The procedure can take as little as five minutes for an early pregnancy or up to three days for a later term abortion. Here's a link to more information from Planned Parenthood. Here are some difficult questions or statements you may hear as you discuss abortion with expectant moms. She might say, what would you do if you were in my place? Of course, your role is as a sounding board, so you might say, I'm not sure what I would do. Even if two people are in exactly the same situation, their choices might be different. One of the hardest parts of experiencing an unplanned pregnancy is that there is no right decision, just the choice that feels best to you. She may say, I feel like having an abortion would be really selfish. And you might say, what do you mean when you say selfish? This question often reveals another issue that is more concrete, like, because my boyfriend wants to keep it, or I'm not done being young and having fun. You can use it as a springboard for more conversation. She might say, my mom or dad will kick me out of the house. And you might say, have your parents ever seriously threatened you in the past? Many young people think that their parents won't understand, but often families are brought closer by sharing difficult experiences. Here are more examples of difficult statements and suggestions of how to respond. Here are links to organizations that provide abortion services and support. The National Pro-Choice Adoption Collaborative, Open Adoption and Family Services, and Friends in Adoption provide free, all options pregnancy counseling from experienced counselors. We're available 24-7. Backline is a peer support talk line that provides a sounding board to pregnant women and couples. And here's a link to the Pregnancy Options Workbook. Let's talk about the option of parenting. If she chooses to parent, we offer practical resources. Counselors connect her to resources through 211info.org, which has a comprehensive list of housing assistance agencies, public assistance, and parenting support organizations. We work with her to help her gain access to these services. This handout has resources for each of the three pregnancy options. Let's talk about adoption. You might be thinking, why do I need to know about adoption? The moms I work with never consider adoption. Well, nationally, only 1% of women facing an unintended pregnancy will choose adoption. But at our agencies, where we create a safe place to discuss all three pregnancy options, 11% of the women who contact us are seeking adoption services. We never really know what someone is thinking or feeling. 
she may want to learn about adoption but be too ashamed or fearful of being judged to bring it up. You may be thinking, the moms I work with are already parenting. By talking about adoption, you're planting the seed in case she needs the information later. So if parenting proves to be more difficult than she anticipated, or if the state is looming and plans to remove the child, or if she becomes pregnant again, she'll know what her options are. You may think, the mom's culture isn't supportive of adoption. Second and third generation American women who are Latina, Asian, or other ethnicities do tend to be open to the same options as their peers. We once worked with a woman from Somalia. She explained the punishment for planning an adoption in Somalia is death. And we thought, well, here's someone who won't plan an adoption. But she did plan an adoption. She insisted on it and on a Muslim family, which we found for her. Since adoption has been surrounded by shame and secrecy for so many decades, we have a lot of myths in our culture regarding adoption. The core misconception is that choosing adoption means the mom doesn't love her baby. I've never met a mom planning an adoption who didn't deeply love and care about her child. Her adoption plan is motivated by that love and concern. Here's a handout with more myths and facts about adoption. Open adoption as an alternative to state adoption. We work with moms and couples from a wide array of backgrounds. They span a variety of ethnicities, ages, religious beliefs, and lifestyles. There's always a reason someone chooses adoption. It might feel like a small reason, like they're just not ready to parent, or a big reason, like they're struggling with issues related to addiction, homelessness, mental illness, domestic violence, incarceration, or they're struggling raising the children that they already have. These moms and couples are at a high risk of having their child removed by the state and placed in foster care. We work with Title X workers, public health nurses, maternal health case workers, hospital social workers, abortion providers, and healthcare professionals. We give them information so they can let high-risk moms and couples know about this option of proactively planning an open adoption for their child with a private agency before their parental rights are terminated. It's important that they know about this alternate track of planning an open adoption so they can have a voice in their adoption and an ongoing relationship with their child. So what does adoption look like? Friends and Adoption and Open Adoption and Family Services, two nonprofit high integrity national agencies have formed the National Pro-Choice Adoption Collaborative or NPAC. We are very unique in that we're pro-choice, not religiously affiliated, and welcome diversity. Over the past 30 years, we've placed over 4,000 children in open adoption families and become the experts on open adoption nationwide. Our process starts with all options pregnancy counseling. If the mom's first choice was abortion or she's had an abortion in the past, it's important she works with a pro-choice adoption agency so her decisions will be honored and she won't feel judged. All services are free of charge to expectant parents. We can travel to them or connect with them via phone, Skype, text, or live chat. We do whatever we can to reach out and include the birth father. Birth fathers often feel disregarded and shut out, but we found that when we welcome him into the process and give him a voice, he often makes a wonderful participant. We believe that the best open adoptions have the involvement of both birth parents. We also welcome the extended family, the expectant mom's parents and siblings, anyone who wants to process this important decision. We have materials available in Spanish and Spanish-speaking counselors. We can arrange interpreter services for women and couples who speak other languages as well. We can also have documents and materials translated for them. We take the term non-pressured options counseling very seriously. In fact, 89% of the women and couples we work with do not choose adoption. They go on to make other choices and we connect them with the services they need. Those who choose to move forward with an open adoption plan continue to receive options counseling as they create their own open adoption vision. How do you choose parents? We ask expectant parents, what values are most important to you? 
What makes you feel welcome and comfortable in a relationship? How do you envision this open adoption relationship unfolding? What do you hope to tell your child about what drew you to this family? They look through a book of families that have been very carefully screened. We do every background check imaginable and a very thorough home study, which is a report about their childhoods, relationships, lifestyle, and parenting values. Our families also have received in-depth education on how to create a lifelong open adoption relationship with the birth parents. Regardless of who she chooses, if they're in our pool, she can be assured they genuinely want an open adoption. At our agencies, that means a real face-to-face -face ongoing friendship that looks a lot like an extended family relationship. We have over 100 families in our diverse pools. Since we do not impose restrictions based on race, religion, marital status, or lifestyle, we welcome families who are straight, LGBTQ, single, and married into our pool. When the adoptive parents are a different ethnicity than the child, it's called a transracial adoption. In our open adoptions, the adoptive parents honor that heritage. The birth family is there to share their culture with the child. As these two extended families merge, they blend their family traditions and create new ones together. We believe strongly that the choice of adoptive parents should lie in the expected parent's hands. She deserves to make an informed decision about who is going to parent her child and has a right to information. So we give her the family's introduction letter, their family description, their video or slideshow, and their home study. Here are links to those materials and a description of the process. How do you build a healthy relationship? The expected parents choose a family. We hope that they not only have a lot in common on paper, but there's a real chemistry between them and the basis for a lifelong friendship. We guide them as they meet and begin to develop a relationship by spending time together and getting to know each other. Birth and adoptive parents create a legally enforceable open adoption contract for ongoing visits that lasts until the child is an adult. The average number of visits is three to four per year. Our hope is that the number of visits that occur exceed the number on the contract and they create a comfortable, natural friendship and see each other as often as they see other important people in their life. We have over 30 years of relationship building expertise. We work with everyone closely behind the scenes to give them the skills and the tools they need to create a strong and healthy foundation to their open adoption relationship. And then we're there for the life of their open adoption, providing ongoing access to relationship guidance and support. Here's a link to that process and a link to a video of an open adoption relationship through friends in adoption with Lisa and Jessica, the birth mom and adoptive mom. We also work with expectant parents who want a closed adoption. Often that initial desire is based on the assumption that if they could just do this adoption and put it behind them, they'd never have to think about it again. But that's not how the human psyche works. We're curious beings. Often after they choose a family and meet them, they'd really like to stay in touch. So it's important expectant parents work with an agency like ours that will provide them with a contract for ongoing visits so they can access it when they're ready. And all of our adoptive parents genuinely want a relationship with the birth parents. So they're happy to keep that door open. Expectant moms shape their hospital and adoption experiences. She creates a birth and hospital plan, including breastfeeding if that's her choice. She also determines how involved she wants the adoptive parents to be at the hospital. We follow her wishes. Afterwards, we have a counselor available to support all parties. We check in with her a day or so after the baby is born to see how she's feeling. We review her options again. At our agency, about 5% of moms and couples have changed their mind about their adoption plan, which we fully support. If she's one of the 95% that wants to continue with her plan, she'll sign legal consents only when she's ready and without pressure. If she wants to take the baby home for a few days, weeks, or months before moving forward with an adoption, that's fine too. We honor her vision. Next, we have an entrustment ceremony in which adoptive parents and birth parents pre-plan something significant to commemorate the moment. They might light a candle, read a poem, or say a prayer. Here's a link to a short video about how this process unfolds. 
We also do last minute placements, which is when a woman contacts us for the first time from the hospital after the baby is born to plan an adoption. She can still choose a family and form a relationship with them. We do the adoption at her pace. She can plan the adoption as she's leaving the hospital or she can take the baby home. We also place older children up to the age of three and a half. We create a transition plan to ensure the child's needs are met at every turn. Why are visits important? After the placement, the adoptive parents take the baby home and the visits start. The visits are so important. They're really the only way the birth parents can see for themselves that their child is happy and healthy and thriving in the adoptive parents' care. This gives them the peace of mind they need to feel resolved about their decision. The visits are the only way that the child can receive direct access not only to their genetic heritage, but to the knowledge that their birth parents love them and care about them and always will. This was the missing piece in closed adoption. For the adoptive parents, the visits are an extension of the relationship they created with the birth mom while she was pregnant. She's someone they have grown to care about tremendously and enjoy spending time with. An alternative to state adoption. Our open adoption process has been incredibly well received by women and couples who don't feel ready or able to parent, as well as women and couples who are at a high risk of having their child removed by the state. In our alternate open adoption track, the child avoids the possible trauma of the foster care system, where there's an increased likelihood of them struggling later with addiction, incarceration, teen pregnancy, mental illness, learning disabilities, and attachment disorders. In our open adoptions, the birth parents are ensured that their child will be placed directly into a safe and permanent home with adoptive parents who will honor their ongoing role in their child's life. Our open adoptions also save the birth parents the humiliation of having their parental rights involuntarily terminated in court in a state adoption. Instead, they can choose a family, have legally enforceable ongoing visits, and form an extended family relationship with their child and the adoptive family. It's important for them to know about our open adoption path. Here's a link to our program description and videos. There are many benefits to the birth parents in our open adoption program. The process is healing and empowering for them. They're truly honored by the adoptive parents. A woman named Shireen comes to mind. She had been in over 40 foster homes as a child herself. When she contacted us, she had already had her two daughters removed and placed in foster care. She had a strained relationship with the foster mom and hadn't seen her daughters in a while. She called us because she was pregnant again. This time she wanted to plan an open adoption. She chose a gay couple from our pool and formed a close relationship with them. She placed her newborn son with them and has a great open adoption. They visit often. The dads also visited with her daughters in foster care so the siblings would grow up knowing each other. So when her daughters were removed from foster care due to neglect, the gay dad stepped up and adopted them too. Now her three children are together and she visits often. She's over the moon happy with the way things turned out. So if adoption is likely to be in the birth parent's future anyhow, they deserve some choices as to what that adoption is going to look like. Here's a link to a video of Shireen's story. Our open adoption path is especially important for teens to know about since teens are twice as likely to lose custody of their child to the state as women who give birth in their 20s. Although parenting is likely to be their first choice, they need a backup plan in case parenting proves to be more difficult than they thought it would be. This is significant because the folks at the Insights Teen Parenting Program in Oregon, who work with over 200 pregnant and parenting teens every year, tell us that 35% of these teens will experience a second or even third pregnancy while they're still a teen. They may be able to parent that first child, but it's the second and the third that are the straws that break the camel's back, and they could end up losing all three of their children. Additionally, 60% of teen parents are in domestically violent relationships, and 40% have an open case with the child welfare system as a parent. They need to have choices and access to our alternative open adoption path. We have a whole host of ongoing services. 
birth parents receive adoption-related counseling. Birth parents and adoptive parents have ongoing access to relationship guidance from friends in adoption and open adoption and family services. These relationships are remarkably successful. People bring their best selves to the table. They all want the very best for this child. They create genuine and lasting friendships. But like any relationship, these aren't perfect. Issues can surface, so we are there to provide ongoing guidance so people can navigate whatever comes up. We have an annual retreat for birth moms around the time of Birth Mother's Day, which is the day before Mother's Day. It's become very popular. We have a huge open adoption community with ongoing events throughout the year. New members are always welcome. These handouts outline the ways in which we're unique. How can you support birth parents and extended family members who choose adoption? Trust them to know what the best decision is for their baby. Validate their feelings. Support the birth plan, their time with the baby, and the choice to breastfeed. Honor their relationship with the adoptive parents. A tremendous amount of relationship building and commitment has been invested into their friendship. We hope you are as touched watching these relationships take root and flourish as we are. We have found that the more contact there is between birth and adoptive families, the greater sense of satisfaction they all feel with the adoption. Birth parents tell us they wouldn't choose adoption under any other circumstances. If you're working with expectant parents who want to create an adoption plan, here are some important things to look for when comparing services. So how did the kids turn out? We reached out to the kids we placed years ago who are now teens and young adults. We asked them a series of questions about what it's like to grow up in an open adoption. They shared their stories in a video diary format, which we've compiled into a DVD. This was such a gratifying project that affirmed how meaningful an open adoption can be for everyone involved, mostly the child. The open adoptee's overarching message was how grateful they are that this type of open adoption exists, enabling their birth parents to hand select a family for them and still stay in their lives. Here's a link to Brianna's video. Here's also a link to more videos of open adoptees telling their stories. Hopefully, you now feel more prepared to provide pregnancy options counseling. You have new information about open adoption as an alternative to state adoption. You have new tools, resources, and materials to assist you in your work. Next steps. Please call OANFS at 1-800-772-1115 or FIA at 1-800-982-3678 with any questions. We're happy to staff a case. We can meet with your expectant parent to provide in-depth options counseling and or open adoption services in person or via phone or Skype. We can bring a customized training to your staff. Feel free to call or email us at info at openadopt.org or info at friendsinadoption.org for more packets, brochures, DVDs, and materials. Here is a link to download all of the webinar handouts. Thank you so much for your time.